three between Fisheye and Etric. Whoever wins this match is going to advance to the winner's bracket. Whoever loses this game, of course, will proceed to the loser's bracket. Upper right-hand corner, we have Fisheye as the yellow for Protoss. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Etric as the dark... The only reason I don't like this dark blue is because it just messes with the name right there, right? It just, like, there's the eye strain. The eye strain! This is going to be on Eclipse. I'm almost wondering if Etric is going to do something similar to game one, where we're going to see some some sort, some form of creativity. Fisheye, I feel like showing just really strong macro play, really calculated strong macro play in game two. And I would be I would be concerned as a Terran opponent, knowing that Fisheye has that strong macro tool in the belt. And I would maybe, yeah, opt for, I don't know, early push. That's my thinking. I don't know. We'll see what Etrix up to. Canceling the factory, or sorry, the supply depot, moving it a pixel over, that is going to cost some resources early and slow things down just a bit. Early probe scout, I assume for a gas deal. So I am betting we're, well, it's potentially we'll see a 12 nexus. Potentially we'll see a gateway. Usually for a gateway build, okay, there's the gateway. Probe Scout moving in, doesn't quite have the minerals to get the gas deal, and Etric is going to lose this gas. Barracks on top to provide that kind of gap so the so Zealots cannot get in, the Marines can attack from behind. Probe going to showboat three SEVs pulling off the line briefly, which again is going to slow Etric's economy down. Keep in mind that Probe... Going for that gas deal slows down the economy on the opposite side a little bit comparatively, but there were 33 resources lost here. You can just see the, like... I like how Terran just leaves the crap on the ground. It's very, like, space... Space human, right? It's like, meh, someone else will... Like, asteroids will eventually clean that up. First salt being produced. Pylon warping alongside. It looks like it's just going to be one gate pressure, though. But even one gate pressure against... Configurations like this with a lack of gas can be super annoying. We are seeing an assimilator warp in to follow. SEV finally moving out to do a comparative scout. Three SEVs pulling off the line. Four SEVs pulling off the line. Five SEVs pulling off the line. I can... Ha ha ha! I feel like the count all of a sudden. A little bit of gas being stolen. And Marine trying to work on that probe. Are we going to see the explosion? This is going to be a battle probe later. I guarantee it. And interesting, the SCV looking for, rather than going to the main, looking for proxy tech to the south. A probe actually moving out maybe to plant some proxy tech. A zealot making its way across. The SCV doesn't see it. There's a cybernetic score warping in. So three marines on the front with a fourth incoming. Should be plenty to deal with this first zealot. Plus a bunker being built out there. So Etric wants to follow this up with a command center sooner rather than later. Yeah, Zealot eating a lot of damage before able to get on that initial Marine. Plus, that bunker is up, but now it's going to go ahead and wander with its 25 health. This can get chased down and cleaned up fairly easily. Not sure what the action with that probe was to the south. Maybe thinking that there was, with that SCV not coming towards the main, that there is additional proxy action. Fisheye going to set up, it looks like, to go ahead and take a Nexus behind this. Etric sending out another SCV to try to get scouting information, and that first Dragoon being produced. A probe again going to that 12... So, Again, expecting some sort of proxy as well. I'm wondering what triggered that, actually. So looking for some sort of hidden tech. Maybe this is kind of an artifact of game one. Where it's like, okay, remember game one. What, I think that's what happened. Because keep in mind, game one, you had the, the proxy barracks. So Fisheye's like, I'm not going to die to that again. Next is going to warp in. That SCV should be able to see it without too much trouble. A zealot sneaking behind the barracks is going to try to wander around and harass it. Actually going to try to wander into the main here. Again, takes a lot of damage as it's making its way across. Should be cleaned up by these marines in not too long, but it is going to disrupt a, a decent amount of, of uh, mining time. What is with the battle unit, the battle workers carrying gas recently in these matches? Factory almost finished. We are seeing still three SCV. Well, I guess it, the command center is already up. SCV on opposite side able to wander in. Going to see the natural expansion being built. Plus that cybernetics core whirling. And realizes this is a one gate into expand scenario. With a delayed two gate which potentially... I'm wondering if Fisheye is going to go for a quick third. To follow this up. 
Still no third gateway or second gateway just yet. And just actually going Robo. So potentially going to go Robotics Facility into third. We'll see. Maybe even go for Reaver Harass into third. I don't know. Machine Shop planning down. I th as far as the overall pace of the game, it feels like Etric is slightly ahead. I don't know what happened on Fisheye's side. But the Nexus just warping in. Etric already has the second base. Plus some nice defense on the front door. Those Marines injured, but... Doesn't matter when you can sit inside your bunker. SCV is just really relentless. Been, both players have relentlessly been scouting each other, expecting some sort of cheese one direction or the other. Dragoon with range now pressing up on the front. That is six Marines, so I'm wondering if Etric's going to do some sort of timing follow up. He is researching mines once again. He has that initial siege tank being built. Two SCVs fighting some defense right there. And these, yeah, these probe scouts and SCVs keep running into one another. That's actually costing mining time for both players. With the, th the third Dragoon on the front and that tank without Siege, this tank needs to be a little bit careful because it could get picked off. Fisheye backing that Dragoon up. Yeah, that's Danger Town. Got to be careful with that. Taking one shot right there. That Dragoon's in the red. And Fisheye just eating a lot of shield damage and honestly now base damage on these Dragoons. And I think missed an opportunity to perhaps dive in and perhaps take that Siege tank out. Another SCV able to get into the main. It's going to see three gate... Robo as a follow-up. I'm just going to hide in that upper end corner. Relentless scouting. Another probe going out, but I assume this one's to set up to go ahead and take a third base. I'm going to comment on that. Yeah, so getting <laughs> Navi's beating me. Navi in chat. Navi's an awesome person. Just going to throw that out there. Shout out to Navi in chat. I actually stole my idea in chat before I was able to say it, but I'm going to say it right now. With those battle workers with their gas... It almost feels like it's like that suicide guy, right? Where it's like, I got gas, I'm going to blow up! Diving into you. Although they still use... I, I feel like that should be used as a weapon somehow. Whatever. Etric moving out two siege tanks. Sorry, three siege tanks, a vulture, and five marines. But this is a significant attack force to, to deal with this. Once this observer spots this incoming, these dragoons should be able to move forward. And with a decent amount of mac micro, particularly with three gateways, should be able to clear this out. I'm... A little bit confused by Etric going for this timing, seeing the three gateways and the observer out there. Because honestly, yeah, Fisheye engaging this. Zealots on top of these Marines. Plus, a lot of these Marines were already weak. So it almost feels like donating some units. Siege tanks otherwise. Does have position here, getting a lot of misfire. Oh, that's unfortunate on Fisheye's part. Having to back off a little bit. But as soon as these units move to the south with reinforcements, should be able to clean this up. Particularly with the observers, without too much trouble, the, this dragoon attacking a pylon for unknown reasons. So three siege tanks down below, poking at that corner. Observers overhead, and I, as I say that, Etric's actually getting a nice defensive slot. I think just because Fisheye didn't have positioning, or perhaps I, I feel like just so many misfires on that corner, really playing well for him. But he's going to go ahead and continue pressing into this. He's got two machine shops, grabbing a third factory. An academy as well, and an armory. And kind of has a soft contain. Is able to take several units out. Looks like that vulture able to sneak up, get a couple kills. That fisheye a little bit in the red here. He was working to go ahead and take that third base. He needs to kind of clean this up before he do does so. Bunker being placed. How did that Dragoon get past those initial mines? Dragoon's pressing forward. A little bit blockaded out. Going to be able to take, yeah, the, the rest of these siege tanks out. This is going to be the trouble one. Depending on misfire. Plus the SCV repair. But yeah, now Etric losing... So that was my concern here, is with the follow-up of those Dragoon gateways, he ends up losing a lot of siege tanks. Now he's at, he has nothing at home base to defend. So you kind of lose map control with that follow-up, and he's lucky that Fisheye isn't like, okay, I'm just going to dive into your natural expansion and do what damage I can, because he has nothing, no, nothing in these bunkers. He's just relying on Fisheye playing passively. Fisheye going ahead and taking this 12 o'clock base. These vultures might be able to sneak in. It's going to be... Uh, no, they're going to get blockaded out. But relying on these vultures just being a harassment to provide defense. Fisheye has eyes on that corner. Five factories being plopped down. On a, almost out of necessity, I think, for Etric. But here's the thing. Any sort of follow-up timing is going to have that many fewer units. Looks like he's going to try to mine things up to go ahead and delay uh, a fourth base. Fisheye at four gateways now. Just now getting the Citadel of Adun, putting down a fifth and a sixth gateway, now that that third base is up. 
And we have a couple zealots and a shuttle wandering up that honestly could go out and maybe do a little bit of harassment. An observer. Seeing those five factories. Starport. With a control tower again. I'm curious with Terrans building this control tower and then not producing dropships or science vessels kind of immediately to follow. I almost feel like you would, you would want to save that 50 gas for at least until the science facility is up. I'd like to hear your comment on that. There are Goliaths and turrets to deal with that shuttle. Fisheye successfully transferring these probes, in, meaning that these vultures weren't in position to go ahead and pick them off. These follow-up probes, though, going to get wiped out. A little bit of... For free, it looks like. They're going to get, yeah, a handful of kills and then be able to wander out. So small victories. Etric with the overall... Worker count lead, but still sitting at a defensive th two bases. And honestly, kind of macroing up to go for, I assume, a weapons one push. With a lot of siege tanks, a lot of vultures to follow it up. And, and try to win the game from there. Yeah, unloading level one weapons along the way. And just going to try to, yeah, I think go, go for a victory off two bases. Dragoons are going to be well out of position here. Ooh, just short of that mine. Oh, just short of that mine. Vulture's getting pinned into that corner. The observer, get, the observer getting picked off on the front. Now, it is possible that Etric just uses this army to go ahead and try to establish a third. But given the factory count in the background... Okay, now we see the dropship. To go ahead and perhaps load up some vultures and go for a drop here at the 12 o'clock. So th I think this is going to be a push at the main. A drop at the 12. And then all sorts of chaos and havoc from there on out. This is Gateway Man production. Starport Templar Archives being built comparatively. This dropship could get caught midfield, though. Looks like it is headed right for that packet of Dragoons. We'll try to keep an eye on that. Etric is kind of meandering towards that bottom right-hand corner. Rather than to the north. That dropship did get taken out. But it's going to wander across. It's, I think it tr wants to try to come up this side corner ramp. I think it's trying to observe, uh, avoid observers that might be in the middle of the field. Get a high ground advantage. It is possible they're going to go all the way alongside the right. Again. Try to sneak things out. Mine exploding on some Dragoons taking one out. And yeah, actually Etric, by going the long way around, is going to catch Fisheye, I think, by surprise and out of position. Again, sieging up on the natural. This is great positioning for him. With mines in between, catching some zealots on the front, more siege tanks moving forward. Reinforcements will be a problem. Trying to press reinforcements across the map, but already established at that natural expansion. Shuttle with some zealots, not even landing a single zealot. So Etric patiently moving forward. The, the vultures should be able to just wander in and go ahead and take out probes of that natural now. More mines being planted, and Fisheye in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. The Dragoons trying to follow up, clear those mines from behind. Some turrets being built underneath. And the Dragoons just getting squashed. Some more Dragoons coming from the north, trying to engage it. The Vultures trying to make their way back. If Fisheye can, can pummel this attack force, he'll be in a good position. But, does he have enough? A lot of Dragoons getting just slammed. Three Dragoons left. More vultures and reinforcements coming forward. It looks like Etric holds a bunker that had no marines in it, distracting some reinforcements on the front. And now the reinforcements can come across the map freely as there's nothing impeding their progress in between. A missile turret on the front just in case some Dark Templar are going to try to do some mine drags. That third base is helpless. It is completely segregated. Tanks getting caught unseaged. Fish are trying to dive on top of that. More siege tanks there, though, and it's just not a large enough attack force to stop the overwhelming Iron Army. Vultures in the main might get some mines planted. There are observers there to go ahead and clear to clear that up. But that natural expansion's forfeit. I think this is going to be GG, and we're going to see Etric moving on to the winner's match. Immense amount of siege tanks. More reinforcements waiting just sneak up. And SCV scouting hero SCVs. These battle workers and these matches. We do have a shuttle with some zealots being scooped up, but here's the thing. These tanks can just proceed unseaged at this stage. 
And there's turrets underneath. Yeah, the Zealot's getting taken out, only getting, it looks like, a single attack before getting wiped out. And there's GG from Fisheye. Etric moves on to the winner's bracket. We'll see Fisheye in the loser's bracket. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.